do stick around to the end of this video because we've got a bit of a uh, exclusive into what comes next. A cheers to Naps team for agreeing to sponsor this revisit. I said to you last time when we covered their update that I was hoping they would continue the trend and as you're about to see, they have most certainly done that. Hi everyone, welcome back to Switch Up, my name's Mark Walker and to what I guess we could call a bit of an all patched up special. Baldo was one of those releases that just had so much expectation on it that it could never possibly live up to it. It didn't help if you remember that it was indefinitely delayed at one point and we didn't have any date as to when it was going to come out. It was originally shown during an indie world showcase with some online commenters leveling it as the next Zelda based solely on the lovely visuals. Now that clearly was something it could never live up to and in fact it never wanted to be that. So when it released it wasn't overly surprising to find that it had quite a few issues. While it still looked like that same beautiful game we saw in the trailers there were quirks with the control systems. The way that you died was quite irritating and it was riddled with bugs that could see you lose entire chunks of progress or even all the orbs you'd collected and some disgruntled YouTubers even released videos about the subject. It was ridiculously difficult but also a little unfair in the way that some of the enemies could hit you without you being able to get to them and overall it just felt a little frustrating and like there was much more work that needed to be done. There have been a few redemption arcs in the industry most notably No Man's Sky, but Baldo also has to be in there in my opinion. So how exactly has this been all patched up, changed and developed since it first came out? Well, let's find out. It's worth mentioning that the game is actually on sale at the moment on the eShop, but I did want to show you firstly, before we do look at the new features, this beautiful collector's edition, which comes from Pix and Love. So if you're interested, I'll pop a link down in the description, but it's likely it's already sold out, honestly. Now, what exactly have they released since it first came out then? Well, they released The Three Fairies, which is an entirely new story set around a small village, and it acts as a prequel, and it actually acts as the first of two prequels, with the elemental temples being the one that we're going to talk about today, and the latest new edition. Then you've got Guardian Owl, which was the base game, and believe it or not, there is actually one more, the final chapter, which will follow the base game and complete the epic story of what they intended for Baldo all along. This one starts out then when Baldo and his grandpa are together, following the events that took place in that first expansion, the Three Fairies. They go out to explore the world, looking for a mysterious galleon, the same one that's in the base game, and Baldo wakes up to find out that his grandpa's missing. Now you set out pretty quickly to find out where grandpa's gone and the adventure is based around four unique dungeons which you'll need to overcome to try and free him. Now I don't want to go too much into spoiler territory but they do flesh out the lore of one of the main villains in the game known as Naroko, and by playing through these two free DLCs you'll have a much better insight to the events which surround the Guardian Hours when you get to play that. And when we remember that that's about 50 hours long if you want to find and do everything. And then you've got these two prequels that are adding probably 10 to 20 hours when put together. Now the community really wanted this developer to focus on hardcore, in air quotes, dungeons. And that's exactly what they've done. So the Three Fairies, the first DLC, is almost like a tutorial before you get into this one. This is literally for the fans, those that wanted those much harder dungeon areas, the freeform exploration that they had initially intended for the game, because although I'd said at the start many thought it would be Zelda, they actually planned for it to be much more difficult and just an all round more challenging experience, more akin to FromSoft rather than Nintendo. So the fans then asked for more of a Link to the Past style dungeoning, and that directly influenced the direction they went here. If there's one thing the original game did well, it was the dungeons, but this builds on that even more. Each one follows a theme from air, fire, water and earth, and their designs and structures as well as their puzzles are all based around these. Now I've had some really interesting conversations with them over the time that they've had the game out and been patching it up, and if there's one thing I, that they're passionate about, it's actually the design of dungeons. They've almost got it down to a bit of an art form, and here they challenge themselves to essentially keep a similar layout between all four of the dungeons, but create brand new and completely unique puzzles linked to those air, fire, water and earth elements. It's quite a difficult thing to articulate and also to show, but it's very clever. It's like the ultimate flex to dungeon building nerds. In a brief interview with the developer, they stated that they can fully understand why Zelda Breath of the Wild almost moved away from traditional dungeons, because they are so incredibly difficult to develop, and they require players to keep a really sharp eye out for all the details. 
Wales. I will say I think the Baldo team have done a better job of signposting in this latter DLC. Some of the base dungeons in the main game were incredibly difficult. I just didn't know where to look and I probably needed to get a bit better. But here I feel like they have almost perfected that. Obviously you'll find a few new enemies along the way as well and the combat feels much more fluid than it once did. You can chain together quite an extensive series of attacks to take down most of the enemies. You'll have your dodge roll. There's the stamina wheel but it's now nice and small and close to the player and the corner map has a sensible colour coordinated indicator as to where to go next. One area that this DLC does also heighten is the feeling of exploration. You've got a big old area outside of those dungeons and there are puzzles to actually unlock them. There are lots of hidden items and chests dotted all over the shop and there's actually a uh, a shop as well, right in the middle. You can buy shields and a few other knickknacks. And I was wondering what the downside to those shields would be because you can block like 100% of the damage with the good one, but they have a durability. I mean, they last an age and you don't really need them because you can dodge around enemies and take most of them out with a unique strategy. But it makes sense that that shield gradually breaks down because you are seriously powerful when you've got it. As you'd hope, there are also some boss fights. Some of these are known as the Guardians and they hold the keys that you'll need to get into those dungeons. They're quite good fights actually. I'm not going to lie, I got absolutely smashed the first few times, but I got there eventually. As far as art and performance, well, it's as beautiful as it ever was. It has a shallow depth of field look to it, but for those that don't like that slight blurring on the edges, you can actually turn that off in the options. Performance is good in both docked and handheld modes, and there are some really stunning scenes. Particular credit has to go to the team for the design of the water. In a world where most games run like, um, uh, something bad, it is nice that this manages to maintain its frame rate as well as have decent load times and a nice visual style. So then these two free DLCs that have already been out that are prequels to the main game are almost the definitive edition, almost the way it was meant to be played before you get into that main story. But then as I was alluding to, what comes next? Now I have to be very careful not to spoil anything, so I'm going to talk in loose terms. If you already completed Baldo, you'll know that it had a certain ending. Now in the early trailers for the game, back in 2021, there's a scene in there which we never saw in the final build of the game. And it turns out that that actually takes place after the end of what we knew as the finishing moments of Baldo. It featured Baldo dressed in dark clothing, hugging one of the characters. I'm keen not to spoil. But what happened was there was a real push by everyone to get this game out. And that section just never got finished until now, I guess. Now, although it isn't released right now, having seen what the developers working on, the fans will get the proper and the true ending in another new content DLC that will be completely free again. Very, very shortly and it will end what is quite a saga and again quite the redemption arc for a developer who got absolutely slammed when the game first came out. It's really nice to see honestly and as I said at the start of this video the game is on sale at the moment. That is a fully calculated thing from the developer and myself. I said if we're going to talk about it, if we're going to do it, you might as well stick the game on sale so that anyone that's interested can pick it up at a slightly reduced price. So yeah, if you want to support developers like this, then uh, grab a Barjan. A thanks to those guys as well for supporting us by sponsoring this episode, and to all of you that enjoy this type of content. A thanks to our Patreons and our members, and if you want to save 5% on your eShop credit for this month, the month of March, you can use code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch Up. Cheers guys. See ya!